What's up everyone, Brian Zane here, here to give you my thoughts on the Backlash Premium Live event which aired this past Saturday night from San Juan, Puerto Rico. I'm gonna say this right now and get out of the way. The crowd in San Juan on Saturday, and for that matter, Friday as well for SmackDown, really helped elevate that show to a whole different level. It's so nice to hear a crowd that is just amped for pretty much everything, and you can make out the cheers and the boos, and they're reacting to all the hits, and everything everything. It was so cool to hear. Uh, I say between WWE's success in Puerto Rico this weekend and what we're seeing uh, with Wembley Stadium and AEW's big all-in show and what the ticket sales so far for that are doing, boy, it really pays to be in a, ma a major American wrestling company and going out to an underserved market because the UK, they love their wrestling. They love their American wrestling when it comes to town. We've seen that in the history of just the gates there over the years for a lot of different companies. We We've seen it, you know, we saw here in, in the Puerto Rico show. Uh, you gotta have more shows out to these different markets you don't normally serve outside of the mainland, the main contiguous 48. And I think uh, that makes it just so much more vibrant and alive. And seeing these markets that crave the wrestling get it, it needs to be more often than once every like 15, 20 years though. The show begins with a cool drone shot, very similar to what we saw on SmackDown the night before. I thought that was very cool. Reminded me a lot of a very similar shot from the Highlander movie. Uh, but then they kept going to the drone shot and the more they kept using it, I'm like, okay, you've kind of killed the magic of the drone. Because not every shot, not every moment needed a drone shot when they had them and sometimes it actively ruined the moment <laughs> at some points for me. Show began with a Raw Women's Championship match. Bianca Belair defending against Io Sky of Damage Control and this right out the gate, this match set the tone in terms of the crowd reaction and the crowd responses and just how vocal and loud they were for the whole show. But this one really set the tone because they were both very pro Bianca and Io during the introductions, I, I believe. But then as the match went on, it was very much like, we're gonna cheer everything Io does and we're gonna boo everything Bianca does. Io with a big stomp on the arm of Bianca to take over and works that arm pretty extensively here. That's gonna be the main story in this matchup. One of my favorite lines on commentary here comes from Michael Cole who says that Puerto Rico has a very knowledgeable sports entertainment audience. Every time they try and shoehorn that phrase where the word wrestling should be, it n almost never works out. It's always cringe. Bianca begins to make a comeback. She military presses Io with one arm, and so then Io just gets dropped right in her face. Whoops. Sky comes back with a springboard arm yoink over the rope. Bianca going for the 450, but Io puts up the Neo into a submission, but Bianca fights out. More awesome back and forth here. Io with a top rope moonsault to the floor, goes to the Hurricane Rana. Bianca blocks it into a huge Huge powerbomb from the second rope. Somehow there's a kick out. Out come Bailey and Dakota Kai in their matching colors. It looks like they just cut one top into two. Bailey with the distraction, allowing Dakota to kick Bianca in the head. Bailey's grabbing onto the braid, but the referee catches her. Eo's moonsault is missed. Bianca hits the KOD to win, and Bianca retains. I give it four stars out of five. I thought this was a great way to start the show. These two ladies definitely uh, had a great chemistry together. Their styles gelled really well here, and they. There might have been one or two points in this thing, brief moments where it looked kind of rough, but I don't think it was to the detriment of the matchup here. I tell you what, my exposure to Bianca, I get why people might be tired of Bianca Belair being on top for as long as she's been. I don't really see it because I don't watch every moment of every show every week anymore. So I'm not maybe overexposed to Bianca as some of the other fans might be. But every time I see what she does in these high profile matches, I'm continually blown away at her poise and her ability. And uh, this match is another uh, notch in her belt as far as I'm concerned. A really great showing for both ladies. We see Bad Bunny get ready for his match in the dressing room. Here comes Ray. Mysterio. They chat for a bit, then in comes Savio Vega to a massive sustained pop. That was crazy. Savio hands Bad Bunny a special Puerto Rican themed kendo stick. Then we get a promo for the new World Heavyweight Championship tournament that will conclude at Night of Champions. Quick question though, if the tournament's supposed to be between a Raw guy and a SmackDown guy, what was the point of the draft? We go on now to Seth F. Rollins versus Omos in a real David versus Goliath situation. Before the match begins officially, Seth is standing in the ring, basking in the adulation of the fans as they sing his song. Suddenly, Omos boots him in the back of the head. The match officially begins, and Omos blasts Rollins with a tackle. Big bump by Seth here. The crowd keeps singing Seth's theme for the first like two, three minutes of the matchup. It's very long here. This matchup, the whole story is Seth is repeatedly trying to do something to Omos, but he keeps being deflected 
expected, keeps getting bounced off. Every time he gets some kind of momentum, Omos is usually able to snuff it out. Seth going for the stop, but Omos stops it, hits a choke slam. Seth keeps trying to get the sleeper on, but Omos fights it off. Rollins hits two stomps, and he also super kicks MVP. We get a kick out, then Seth goes up top and hits a super stomp and the cover for the win. Two and a half stars out of five for me on this one. You know, Seth had a huge assignment, no pun intended, ahead of him to carry Omos to a quality match. This, I believe I saw someone say on Twitter, this was Omos's longest main roster match since he's been there in about 10 and a half minutes. So real marathon man was Omos. But those 10 minutes, you know, they went by fast and it didn't feel like they were struggling to, you know, tell the story or make it look good. I think Omos looked very strong in defeat here. Seth looking very valiant. And uh, yeah, if anyone can make that match look good, it was Seth for sure. I think him, the way he fought back and the way he kept kind of kind of counteracting what Omos was doing, very smart here. And yeah, it just gives him more momentum for what I would imagine he's going to be involved in the world title tournament. U.S. Championship match, triple threat up next. Austin Theory defending against Bronson Reed and Bobby Lashley, who he's traded the belt with a couple of times earlier this year. Lashley with the power on Theory early on, that stalled vertical. Theory and Reed work together against Bobby for a bit, but it does not last long. Lashley comes back with some slams, hits the spear, positions himself to get dragged out of the ring by Reed. On the outside, Reed with a damn Vader bomb onto Lashley. Tsunami attempt is thwarted. Theory caught in the hurt lock. Austin's able to fight out of it. Lashley right in Bronson's path of the tsunami. The cover is broken up. Bronson goes for a moonsault but gets none of it. Walks into a spear by Lashley. Austin dumping Bobby out, covering Reed for the win. I give it three stars out of five. This match went pretty much how I expected. A lot of those big man moments. Again, uh, credit to Bronson Reed in this matchup for some of the stunts and some of the, the moves that he pulled off in this one. Very impressive. I thought the sequences they had when they would go from like guy to guy and hit those power moves uh, from one move to the next, very well done. Those were really explosive and, and fun to watch, uh, those sequences for sure. But yeah, it went pretty much the way I expected. It was an issue of just how sneaky Austin Theory could be. We've seen that finish a lot before, but you know, definitely fits the character and pretty much how I thought it was going to go. Moving on to the SmackDown Women's Championship next as Rhea Ripley defends against Zelina Vega, who gets a big old reception here. The member of the LWO coming out, decked out in the colors of Puerto Rico's flag, walking out with the big flag cape. Her family's there ringside in the front row. Very cool moment for her. Early in the match, Zelina ducks out to the front row to her mom and she grabs a chancla, which gets a huge pop. Great moment that is soon snuffed out with a scintillating powerbomb. Rhea bending Zelina over backward, looking pretty confident in this match. Of. She counters the riptide attempt into a DDT, crowds at a fever pitch, the 619, the Meteora, but not enough. Vega is cut off during another comeback attempt. Rhea with the riptide to win and retain, but Zelina gets a huge standing ovation after the fact. I give it two stars out of five. You know, the outcome was never really in doubt, but I think the crowd being on Zelina's side and some of the timing of Zelina's comebacks and her, her moments definitely gave the match an extra layer of anticipation and drama that maybe she is going to finally, you know, pull away here and do that. But I think it was still, you know, a very, it was a good, good win for Rhea here where she didn't have to be too much like a heel. She didn't have to do anything uh, outlandish or out of the ordinary to get a reaction. She just had to be herself. And Zelina, just by presence of her being there, and of course, you know, she said that it was said that she was dedicating it to her father who died in 9 11. Uh, the fact that it was the this Puerto Rican crowd there, it was a special moment for Zelina. And I think she's definitely worthy of it. She definitely has earned that moment uh, when you consider what her career has been through in the last couple of years alone and what she's been through uh, even since coming back. So for her to have gotten this moment, I think was well deserved, even if she doesn't win the championship. San Juan. On street fight up next as Bad Bunny takes on former good friend Damian Priest, two guys from Puerto Rico in a huge matchup here. It's part of the what was billed as a double main event for the evening. This is kind of the end of the first half, and then we're gonna get Cody Lesnar for the second one. But if you have two main events, do you really have any main events? Bad Bunny makes his entrance, pulls out the cart full of plunder. Nice comment by Corey Graves. This is where hardcore got its start. Match begins, and Priest is cocky at the beginning, but Bad Bad Bunny busts out a damn Michinoku driver out the gate. Priest could end the match early with South of Heaven, but he's not done. Bunny hucks a chair at Priest mid-dive, shows some signs of life. They're fighting their way through the crowd into the tech area on the floor. Damien with a broken arrow off a box through a table, 
Preet's not done though. He still wants to continue the damage. He goes for a kick on the outside, but he hits the ring post instead. Bunny fights back, attacking the leg with a chain and with a chair. Uh, Damien's begging off is hilarious here. In comes the Judgment Day for the beatdown, but out comes Rey Mysterio. Rey's beaten down, but then out comes Carlito, another native son, some damn wrestling royalty in Puerto Rico here. The 619 to Dominic. Carlito with the apple spit, but then you hear the Los Bariquas theme, which first and foremost is a banger by itself, but then out comes Savio Vega to a massive ovation once again. He brings out the LWO, kind of a weird order in which they did all this, wasn't it? Vega with some shots on Dom and Finn, Judgment Day powder. Meanwhile, the match is still going on here. Bunny with a figure four, which was Carlos Colon's finishing hold. Priest is able to fight out of it. Bunny has a sliced bread, almost spikes himself. Many chair shots. Bunny with the Bunny Destroyer for the win. Nice little curtain call with all the other LWO members. Honorary and official here tonight. I give it four stars out of five. This is my favorite match of the night. A wildly entertaining spectacle here that once again give credit to the crowd for just making it feel so much more impactful and exciting. I did expect there were going to be some cameos like Judgment Day and LWO, but them adding Carlito Colon and then Savio Vega was just really the cherry on top for that one. Um, the match went a little bit longer than I would have liked it to. I think if they shaved maybe five minutes off it, it would have been just a, a little more perfect, but I think that still the fans were really eating out of the palm of their hand. They could have gone a little longer, I'm sure, if they wanted to, but but um, that was my one little knock on this matchup here. Uh, the stuff that we saw in this, highly entertaining. And uh, yeah, what, what a star Bad Bunny is, you know, for him to be showing out like this and a really great singles performance uh, with his good friend with that history there. Uh, it was just a very well done, well done popcorn match. And I mean that in the best way possible. The crowd, again, eating out of the palm of their hands. If you watch one match from this show, this is the one to watch. In a six man tag match, you have Solo Sokoa and the the Usos taking on Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, and Matt Riddle. You know who was a big difference maker in the story of this match? Solo. Absolutely was the main focus of this contest here. You know who wasn't a difference maker in this match? Matt Riddle. Oh boy, him being added to this storyline, I guess for the purpose of we got to find a sixth man, man. We got to like find a body to be put in this thing because that's about the extent of what Matt Riddle has been good for in this entire buildup and also the match itself. Sammy taking a lot of the heat early on here and he's kind of on an island for a while as KO gets his head thrown into the steel steps. Sammy finally gets a chance to tag in Riddle who does go on a big run but is stopped with a super kick. KO back in the mix. We get some accidental super kickage between the Usos. The Swanton is stopped with some knees. Sammy's back in. Goes for a flying nothing and is hit with a double super kick. Jay with some more trash talk for Sammy, saying it's his fault. We get a blind tag from Solo. There's tension. Jay tags back in. More tension. Sammy hits Solo with a haluva kick. One on Jay, but Solo saves the match. Riddle continues to be a non-issue in this matchup. Solo almost spikes his own brother Jay, but he stops himself. Riddle comes in, hits the bro Derek on Jay, but Solo did make a blind tag earlier, hits the spike on Riddle and pins to win. I'll give it three and a half stars out of five. You know, this was no main event of night one of WrestleMania, but still a great match with everyone involved. Uh, but boy, they sure booked Matt Riddle like he did not matter in the grander scheme of things in this storyline. The story was still very much Zayn and Owens versus the Bloodline, but now all that heat has transferred from, you know, Sammy versus the Bloodline. Now it's all within the Bloodline, building more of that story, that tension between Solo and uh, the Usos and everything. And I think that's really fascinating. It, it, it was time for another kind of wrinkle like this. Um, now that Sammy's out of the picture, we can start to build more of that friction within the group and the family unit. Uh, boy, when we do get the match with Solo and Jay, that's going to be really interesting. But as far as the match itself goes, it was, yeah, it was a solid match. In your second of two main events this evening, Cody Rhodes takes on Brock Lesnar. It's a grudge match, which we're really not sure why there is a grudge to begin with here, because Michael Cole says on commentary, and they're going to repeat it a lot in this matchup. Brock Lesnar has never explained why why he assaulted Cody Rhodes the night after WrestleMania. 
Cody opens with a big dive to the outside before the match even begins. Many shots with the steel steps and the chair. Once the bell finally rings, Brock catching Cody mid-cutter and hits a German. Cody goes for a cross body and Brock catches him. More Germans and other suplexes of the non-German variety. Brock runs himself into an exposed ring post and busts himself open hard way. The Cody cutter, the disaster kick. Cody and Brock are both now just covered in blood. Cody hits two crossroads, but not enough. Brock with the F5 and the kick out. Brock with a Kimura lock, but Cody rolls it into a pinfall, gets a surprise win. I'm going to give it two and a half stars out of five. This match was the typical, you know, spamming of signature moves that we've come to expect with Lesnar matches. It was elevated a little bit by the blood, which, by the way, you think Cody Rhodes was excited for a chance to work with Brock Lesnar? Because, oh, you know, regardless of whether it's intentional or not, there might be some blood in this thing to really get the juices flowing for the emotion of this matchup here. And by the way, how appropriate is it that in a place with as violent a wrestling history as Puerto Rico, we actually get some color in the main event? That was kind of a nice timing there. Um, I thought the match was fine, and I thought that the, the finish was a nice kind of shocking way to do it. But the way this show just kind of ended felt kind of flat to me, where it's like, huh, that match, it happened. All right, well, Cody gets to walk away, and Brock looks kind of shocked, and that's how it ends. And it's just, good night, everybody. And, you know, it's like I said, it's hard to really get a big you know, redemptive victory feeling for Cody in this one because like, ah, eh, there's really no story to it. We don't know why Brock attacked Cody. And they say that at least like three or four times with this matchup. So you go, we don't know why they're fighting, but they're fighting. And I wonder if had they swapped the two main events and had the big feel good, crazy ass match with Bunny and Damian Priest to wrap this show up, uh, then maybe the show would have ended on a stronger note. I think it was fine. I mean, this match was fine on, as a main event on its own because you had that, you know, somewhat drama of all the big fin finishers. You had the blood. So you can see it ending on that. But I don't know. It just felt kind of flat to me compared to like the other main event. That's the one that people really came to see. And not to say the crowd like died after Bunny and Priest because they really didn't. But I think that just from a pacing standpoint, I wonder if that would have been a better final match of the evening. What do you think? My grade for Backlash 2023 is a B-. You know, this show is not a show where you're going to get a lot of, like, super interesting things happening on the level of, like, you know, you're not going to get these big exclamation point moments for, like, chapters or breaks in a story. You're getting a lot of setup for other storylines coming in the months to come on Raw and SmackDown in this post-draft world and things that are planting seeds for future main attractions like this Solo Sokoa, Jey Uso thing. But you didn't get any title changes, and there wasn't anything like really huge happening on this show, monumental. You know, Cody beating Brock was a shocking way it happened. And like I said, the street fight was a spectacle. But besides that, you know, you had a lot of solid to great matches with a lot of exciting conclusions and a red hot crowd. So even if storyline wise, you weren't getting a lot of big like mm, moments, like say Sammy hitting Roman with a chair at the Rumble, for instance, you still got a really solid show. It was a fun, if a bit inconsequential is the best way I describe it for me. But what did you think of Backlash, folks? What other underserved markets like Puerto Rico or the UK do you think need another pay-per-view treatment in the near future? Let me hear it in the comment section below. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to Wrestling With Regret. Hit that bell icon. And of course, next week, I'm going to be coming at you with more Hulkamania, talking about King of the Ring 1993. Hope you enjoy that. But until then, folks, I'm Brian Zane, and I'll see you next time.